Hi everyone, Dr. Julie Costin here, and I'm here to tell you about our new uh, assessment called Your School's Inclusion Quotient, and we are so excited. We know that this tool will be used uh, throughout the country and beyond to examine just how inclusive is your school setting. Now we've had fun with the IQ, that concept of IQ, because as you well know, students have been measured for a long time on their in intelligence quotient or IQ. What we did is we flipped this around to say, okay, we used to look at how fit was a student for the school system. And now we flipped it around to say, how fit is this school to educate all students? So join me, we're gonna take a look at this tool and I'll give you kind of a tiny sneak peek of the tool. So I'm gonna share my screen and we will walk through. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the very top so you can sense uh, what this is all about. So it's called Your School's Inclusion Quotient. And it's really designed to give you a sense of where your school setting is on their journey towards inclusion, okay? It's a strength-based approach. It is certainly not a deficit-oriented approach. In other words, we're not saying what's wrong with your school, but we're saying where are you really doing a good job and then where can we keep moving? So it's guided by uh, many principles, 10 principles that are best practices in inclusive education research. And what we did is we're asking people to take a look at each of these particular areas and rate them one to four. So I'll give an example, starting with vision. We have a clear written and public vision about inclusion. So you would think huh, in my school setting, am I a one? So not at all, like I don't think we have one or we might have something somewhere or yeah, there's like a paragraph on the website or a four, absolutely, definitely, everybody knows our vision and it's really crystal clear to all stakeholders, okay? That's an example of that. We then move into leadership and attitudes. I'll take an example of attitudes. Uh, this one, the top one, disability as seen as a difference, not a deficit. So if in your school setting, disability is seen as really a difference or diversity, but not as a deficit, you're gonna give yourself a four for that, okay? Placement practices, an example of that might be um, all students, the second one, all students are educated within their neighborhood school. So what that means is in your school setting, no child is sent to a different school because of their disability. They all attend the school that they would attend if they didn't have a disability. So this would mean in your school setting, you don't have a program or a place for kids with autism or kids with emotional behavioral disorders, et cetera. Uh, if that were true, you give yourself a four. Then we look at the IEP and then we look at the section called collaboration and instructional planning. Then the section called classroom instruction. So really taking a close look at what's happening in the classroom. Then we have a whole section on provision of related services and then in-class support. So I'll give another example. Um, how about this? Uh, in-class supports. Paraprofessionals are assigned to classrooms, not to individual students. So that's a best practice. So you'd give yourself a four if that was happening in your school system. Another is we've got a section here called ongoing supportive inclusive practices, um, meaning monthly ongoing supported problem solving is available to all educators and administrators, okay? That's an example. Then you come up with your total. And after you get your total, you really take a minute to look at what type of a school are we? Now, this part is just kind of for fun, where we put um, what we think it means, different totals, what they mean. Um, and I'll just give an example, like if your school is a flashlight school, it means you have many practices that are inclusive and you can begin to light the way for others. So the question is, how do you take those practices and make them even brighter? In what areas can you improve your practices? So we don't just end there. What we do next is have you draw a picture of your school's inclusion quotient. So you can imagine that you would fill this in based on the numbers that you already came up with. And let's imagine that your uh, the attitudes in your school system are sort of lacking. Um, or the leadership in your school system is incredible, right? Way up here at a 20. Either way, what you're going to do is make decisions about what is it that you think you should do to improve your practices. So we suggest that you reflect and commit. So look across the graph. 
What areas would you choose to focus on? And they may or may not be your lowest scores because sometimes focusing on your strengths can help you get more of what you're looking for. And then we have people create their commitment areas and then we create an action plan and timeline. One thing people need to know um, is that most often school systems go through this process with us and then we help you create your next steps and we help provide the professional development that goes along with each of the areas that are your commitment areas. So just wanted you to know this is what exists and we are here and more than happy to help you uh, make your schools more inclusive. Thanks everyone.